So after I made my proof of concept video for integrating Sonos with the Vera, I had a couple people asking me how I did it. So I just wanted to give a quick tutorial here of what I did. I just scratched the surface here. There's a lot more that can be done, but hopefully this will just give you enough to get started. And then you can adjust for how you want it to function in your home. So the first thing you want to do is install the apps. So you want to install the UPnP event proxy as well as the Sonos controller app. Now as you do each of these, you're going to want to reload the Vera just by hitting the save and reload button. So I already have these apps installed, but if you didn't have them installed, you could just go to the install apps tab and then search for them there. The other thing you're going to want to do if you want to use the text to speech option or the say command is you're going to want to set your Vera uh, to be not secured. So where it says do you want to secure this Vera, you're going to say no. What this means is if you have someone connected into your network, they can just type in the IP address of your Vera and they won't be prompted for a username and password. So if you're concerned about that, don't change this setting. Also, just so you know, I had to actually physically unplug my Vera to change this setting when I was doing my testing and set this to no, I don't want to secure it. So I had to save my setting to no and then actually unplug my Vera and completely reboot it for it to take effect. So if you're having problems with the say command, give that a shot. Okay, so before I move on to setting up the actual Sonos app, um, I'd recommend you either configure your Sonos to have a static IP or set up DHCP reservation in your router. The reason you want to set up DHCP reservation or a static IP is it will give your Sonos the same IP address on your network so you don't have to worry about that changing on you and then not being able to control it with your Vera. Um, I much prefer DHCP reservation because then my router can manage it all and I don't have to worry about it setting up a static IP and all the different devices and learning how to do it. I just get the MAC address of um, my Sonos or whatever other device and then set up a static or sorry set up DHCP reservation in my router. Um, it's kind of beyond the scope of this and I'm sure our most router settings are different anyway so if you want to do that just go ahead and look it up online. I'm sure you can find instructions for doing that. So moving on to the setup I'll just click on the wrench. I can modify the name up here and then I'm going to go to the settings and I'm going to discover if my Sonos isn't already selected here. So then I'll just select my Sonos, close it, and then hit save and reload the Vera. So once your Vera is reloaded, we're going to go back into the settings here. And then uh, the only other thing that you may want to change in here, uh, if you have a different language that you want to say, you can go ahead and select it here. So now I'd recommend just testing everything to make sure it works. So you can go ahead and type in the text you want to say, and then click on the Say button. And your text should just be set over your Sonos. And then you can go in and select the player here. You can play, pause, skip to the next track, select the volume. Just make sure all these settings work OK, because if they don't work here, then they're definitely not going to work with your automation. Now that everything's set up, we're ready to start automating. Before I show you what I've done, I'm just going to go in and show you a couple of resources that you can use on your own to set up your own automation. So on the Help tab here, there's links to the wiki and the forum, which will give you uh, help you need. And then there's also different descriptions here that you can use to set up your own automation. I've also found it helpful to go onto the Advanced tab here. And then I can see what the different uh, states are that I either want to use for triggers for my scenes or um, to set if I'm wondering which, which property I want to set in my, my scene. So the advanced tab is also a good place for finding helpful information. So now I'll just give you a few examples of some automation that I do so you can get an idea of how to actually automate Sonos and then build off of what I've done uh, and make your own. So I use Plague for almost all of my home automation. Um, I've made a couple of videos on that. If you've never used it before, you can check those out. Uh, so I'm not going to go over how to use Plague, but just how I've done my scenes. So I'm just going to go in here and edit my plague and then go to my condition. So the first one I do is I play uh, Sonos Favorite when I unlock the door. So I have this trigger in plague uh, that knows when I've unlocked the door. Uh, and this is just a schedule because it's this will always be true. So if this doesn't make any sense, it really doesn't matter. Your door lock may be different or your whole condition may be different. But basically, I need to know when I've unlocked it within the past 30 seconds, then this will become true. 
And I also want to only do this because I've got young kids if it's um, daylight out so they won't be sleeping. We're not carrying them in in the middle of the night. Um, well, I guess not the middle of the night. <laughs> Just uh, we're not carrying them in if it's maybe like 7 o'clock or something and it's dark outside. Uh, and then what I want to do is check to make sure that uh, my Sonos is not already playing. So remember I said the advanced tab is helpful. This is where I found this um, state. Um, I could check to see if it's already playing and I just look for that state in the advanced tab of the Sonos and then plugged it into my Vera input up here. So basically if I came home in the middle of the day, I unlocked the door and my wife already had it playing, I didn't want to switch to my favorite station, I wanted hers to keep playing. So as soon as this condition is met, all these things are true, then it's going to go and execute this action. So I'll just edit it. And then most of the Sonos um, automation will be up here on the advanced button. So, and this is very similar to scenes in Vera. Uh, so if you wanted to, you could just do a scene for this and not have a uh, play, but I like to have the more control over it, and then I also like to keep it on one play as well, so I'm not trying to figure out if I did it in a scene or in a play. But it could be done all within a scene as well. So what I would do is just pick a device first. So I would scroll to my Sonos. Uh, Sonos. And then I just click Add. And then it's going to load all of the different actions I can do here. So this is all found on that wiki page. So then you could choose, you know, if you maybe just wanted to play instead of play a specific favorite, you could just choose Play, and that would play whatever was last in there. Uh, but I chose Favorite, so then I did Play URI. And then here's the code that I just found on the wiki. Um, so it's 30 seconds to Mars Radio. And then I, if I wanted to, I could set a volume, but I've just left that blank. So after you've done that, you just press Finish. And then you'll hit Save when you're all done making your play conditions. And then reload the Vera, and it's always a good idea to test. The next thing I did was I wanted to turn on my Sonos. If the, uh, the one in the family room was playing, I wanted to turn it on in my living room if there was motion detected there. So I also did that with Plague. And that's in my condition down here called Sonos Group Living Room. So what I ended up doing was uh, doing it with groups. So I first check to see if the family room state is playing. And then I check to see if there's motion in the living room. And then I check to see if the Sonos Living Room state does not equal playing. So that's the NE playing. And then I did the so, uh, Sonos Living Room ID equals the Sonos Group Coordinator Living Room. So what that all does is basically checks to see if the Sonos is not grouped with the family room, then it will add it to the family room group. Now once again, I found all these states under the Advanced tab in the Sonos app. So that's how I was able to figure out um, what comparisons I needed to do in order to to make this join the group. The other thing that I had to do in order for this to work is uh, we have to make sure that the group is always based on the family room as the group coordinator. So when you're setting it up, if you're using a phone app or something, you always want the speaker uh, as the group coordinator to be controlled in the app. So hopefully that makes sense. If you have multiple Sonos, um, that should make sense to you. But if I were to control it from the living room, then this wouldn't work, obviously, because this, the living room is the group coordinator. Okay, so let me move on and show you my actions here. So then I'm going to go to my advanced tab here. And then I'm just going to, um, same thing I did before, I would select the Sonos. So in this case, I would choose my living room this time. Then I would click Add. And then I would just tell it that I want to join the group. Join group. And then I just give it the name of the group. So in this case, it would be Family Room for me. 
and that's it. I press finish and then save. So the next thing I've done is I have Sonos tell me the weather uh, every morning when I walk into the kitchen. So this one is a little bit uh, more complex, uh, or at least for me it was. Maybe someone else can figure out a simpler way to do this, but this is the way I've done it. So what I have is a schedule called Weather Var Yes, uh, which basically uh, runs uh, every morning at 5 a.m. So this is just a simple schedule that's basically true every morning at 5 a.m. for one minute. So then what I do is as soon as that's true, I, um, I trigger an action that will set a variable to yes. So in my actions, I have a variable container, that's just another plugin. So it's a variable container and I just set variable 2 to yes. So basically um, at 5 a.m. I set this to yes. The reason I'm doing this is I don't want it to say the weather every time I walk into my kitchen and trigger the motion sensor. I only want it to do it the first time I walk into the kitchen. So at 5 a.m. it sets this to yes because I don't get up before 5 a.m. normally. And then I'll go back to my conditions here. So as long as this equals yes and there's motion in my kitchen, then it will execute this action, see weather announce. Okay. And let's go to the advanced tab here. So what I've done is I've set my variable container, the set variable two to no. So then it's not going to be yes anymore, obviously, right? So then it won't uh, say the weather every time I walk into the kitchen. And then I actually put a delay in here and then I'm running a scene. So the reason I'm running the scene is the the say command is all uh, loop code or Lua code which I'll show you in just a second. But what I found was is that was executing before my lights were turning on uh, and I want my lights to turn on when I walk into the kitchen so I just put a delay. I have another completely separate plague action for that uh, and condition for that for my lights, but um, this loop code was executing first and then it was actually delaying when it was saying the weather before turning on my lights. So anyway, long story to say, I just put in a delay and then I run a scene instead of putting it directly in the loop code of this action. Hopefully that'll make sense in just a second. So let me go ahead and show you that loop code. So I go to my automation here, then I go on my say weather, and then it's going to be under my loop code here. So I'll post a link to this code if it doesn't fit all in the description or the info of the video. Um, I'll try and put in the info of the video, I'm not sure how much I can put in there, but if not I'll post a link to where you can get it. Um, I didn't definitely invent all of this code, I found this from uh, the forum and then kind of pieced it together. I did put in some of this weather, um, the Wonderground weather app code. So then it kind of, it tells me if there's expected to have any precipitation, snow, things like that. So let me just walk through this really quickly here if you are interested in this. So um, here's gonna be the ID of my Sonos plugin. So if you're gonna do this, you would put in your Sonos. Uh, and then I'm gonna have a temp so this is actually a temperature sensor at my house. So if you wanted to use the Wonderground plugin, uh, you could just plug in that different service ID there. Um, or just use this one, this Wonder SID here. Okay, and then my outside temp, I'm just get, getting all these and putting them into variables now. So I'm pulling it from my um, temperature sensor at my house. So it's temp SID, and then it's gonna get the current temperature and then this is the device number and then the Wonderground um, plugin is the device number here so that's what I'm using for the forecast high temperature so uh, you can play around with this code I'm not going to go into too much um, you know adjust it to how you want but you may need to switch uh, the current temperature with uh, to the Wonderground uh, plugin instead of your local um, temperature if you don't have a thermometer outside your house so this is basically just setting up the variables here 
and then converting the precipitation to a number. Um, like I said, most of this code is all reused. I found this, so it's going to announce the time of day, so good morning, afternoon, evening. Uh, and then this is just building up the different the say command here. And then this right here is where it all happens. So uh, this is the code for the say command. So it's going to say, and then these are the variables in order here. So time of day. So that would be the good morning, good evening. It's currently the outside temp, so the temperature outside. It is forecast to be weather conditions, so partly cloudy, rainy, things like that, with a high temperature of, and this is all from the Wonderground app, high temp and a low temperature of low temp, and then if there's any precipitation, I'll put that in, and I, build, I built that whole variable, the precipitation variable, up here. So hopefully that all made sense. I'll post the code, and you can feel free to tweak it as you want. But that's how I say the weather to me every morning. Okay, and the last thing that I have is I just have my Sonos, among other things, turning off if there's no motion on my main floor detected for half an hour. So let's say we forgot to turn it off when we left the house or went to bed, something like that. They'll automatically turn off uh, after half an hour. So I've also done that in a scene um, just because it's easy for me to edit and I can run it from my phone if I wanted to. So I know I said that I use Plague a lot. Um, and technically I'm still using Plague to execute the scene or to run the scene, but I've done all my actions to turn off my devices in this scene. So I'll just show you that really quick. This is probably the most simple thing we can do here because you don't even have to go up here into the Advanced tab. You can just go right to the Sonos and then just press Stop. Go to the other one. Oh, that's actually a light, another light, and then Stop. So those are just lights that turn off after half an hour if we forgot to turn them off. So really basic there, but just wanted to show you that I that if you want to do really basic ones like turning off your Sonos after half an hour or something like that, you can. Okay, so that's it. Um, hopefully that helped. If you have any questions, post them in the comments or um, post them on the forums. Like I said, there's many, many examples on the forums and in the wiki that you can go and automate yourself. So hopefully you found that helpful. Thanks.